know with what the Lord has been teaching us since last week that the day of the Lord is coming soon. The day of the Lord is coming soon. We we'll continue with the sermon, the midnight cry. The midnight cry. The day of the Lord is coming soon. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Soon and very soon. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to see the King. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 14. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Second Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Hallelujah. Whatever you sow, you shall surely reap. First Thessalonians 4.16-17 for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Hallelujah. Second Peter 3, 8 to 10. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Nine. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. As some understand slowness, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. Tell your neighbor, the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear. With a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 14, 26 to 27. This is the plan determined for the whole world. This is the hand stretched out over all nations. For the Lord Almighty has purposed, and who can thwart him? His hand is stretched out, and who can turn it back? Praise Jesus. We were talking about the day of the Lord. We spoke about some few things. We said that it looks as if the Lord's coming has delayed. That is what we think. But we have forgotten that it's not our purpose. It's God's purpose. So in his own time, the Lord will appear. Praise the Lord. We have forgotten ourselves. We are enjoying. We are gyrating. We are doing so many things. Forgetting that one day, the Lord will show up. And if he does not show up, your life can be taken away from you as well. But are you ready? Are you prepared? We cited an example of the days of Noah. When Noah were asked, was asked by God, instructed to build a, a, an ark. And for 120 years, Noah was preaching to the people, change yo, change yo, the day of the Lord is coming. They refused. And when the rain started, some were having their weddings, some were having parties, and then the rain started, the Lord destroyed the whole earth. And then in the days of Lot, it's happened again. And in our days, in this generation, it looks as if history is repeating itself. People have been asking, City time, my car say yes, urban. So, the truck is so puanka, on bedouye. Or, the truck is so anka, on bedouye, na. Praise the Lord. Scoffers will come. People will make mockery of our, our, our God. People will say so many things. But I can assure you that whatever the Lord has said, his hand will not thwart his effort. He will do it. Hallelujah. He's coming. And we also said that if people are saying that um, once saved, forever saved, what is the need of working out our own salvation with fear and trembling? There is no need to work anything out. Praise the Lord. We just leave anyhow, and then when the Lord comes, we will go. But a typical example is the situation of Lot. When the angel of the Lord gave a simple instruction, like we have been giving instructions to how to live on this earth. And the key word is obedience. Lord was instructed that from your, the point that you are standing to where salvation is, there is something you must do. Simple obedience. Do not turn back. Do not turn back. That was the word of the Lord. If you turn back, you miss the mark. So from the point where Lord was standing to the salvation point, he had to do something. That is what exactly the Lord is expecting you and I to do. 
praise the Lord. Until the master will show up, there are certain things that we should do. We have to be obedient. We have to be obedient. We don't have to be stubborn. We don't have to be arrogant. Hallelujah. And a typical example was that when Lot was going, the wife was also there. Mrs. Lot was there. Uh, the children also were following. They were going. Everybody was working his own salvation. Everybody was minding his business. And so Mrs. Lot turned back. Mr. Lot did not turn back and say, Honey, why are you turning back? And even the children, Mommy, 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 Mommy. When it got to that time, no Mommy matter. No Mommy matter. My friend will quit here straight. I have salvation. My friend will quit here straight. Praise the Lord. Everybody was minding his own. The key word is obedience. Botwe no fe. Ni wala nye o se. Nyo mo ye mo ji wala. Amen. So obedience is the key word. So in the days of the prophet Jeremiah, in the book of Jeremiah 35, when the people were stubborn, they were disobedient. God was warning them, I'll do this, so I'll do that. So, and Jeremiah, God asked Jeremiah to go into the camp of the Rechabites, a certain group of people who follow a certain, uh, they have, let's, let me say, they have a grandmaster, like we have the lodges and all, some of the courts. They have a grandmaster called Jehonada. And this man instructed the children of uh, Rechab that do not build tents. Do not drink wine. Because we are so generous on this earth. So don't go, don't be materialistic. Don't, do, don't go looking after so many things. Be like this. And even their master who gave, the human master who gave the instruction was dead long ago. But these people still hooked on to what their master said. So when the children of Israel were disobedient, God asked them to go to, the, go to these people, this group of people called the Rechabites, Re to test them and give them wine, to drink, set tables before them, ask them, let, you know, wine upon wine, and ask them to come and celebrate. They said, we don't drink wine. We won't take wine, because our master said we shouldn't take wine. Our wives will not take wine. Our children's children's children should not take wine. And that is what we know. Even our master is dead long ago. And God told uh, Jeremiah that this is exactly what I want my children to do. Hallelujah. This is exactly what I want them to do. They have to be obedient. Even a human master, people are still obeying his command. What about you? Praise the Lord. What about you this morning that I'm speaking to you? That you are sitting under the voice of the Holy Spirit. What is it that you are holding on to? That you don't want to, you don't want to let go. You don't want to go by the word of God. Hold on to the word of God. Some of us are hooked on to what our fiancés have said. Our human lovers have said. What, what, our, what our parents have said. What somebody has told you about your work with Jesus. Why would you sit down for somebody to advise you on your own salvation? All the scriptures that we read. We are going to stand before the judgment throne. Single, mokome, 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 mokome. Praise the Lord. Even your spouse cannot die for you. It's only Jesus who can die for you. And he's giving you simple instruction, obedience. If you are willing to obey, you will eat the good of the land. So today we want to continue with Matthew 25. Matthew 25, the midnight cry. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of ten bridesmaids. You see, there is, the kingdom of God is a whole mystery. I think in the book of um, Luke 9 or so, the disciples asked Jesus, that why is it that any time you gather the people, you tell them about parables? And Jesus answered and said that the kingdom of God is a mystery. It has been revealed to you, but they, they don't know. It's a mystery. So David once said that, God, show me the mysteries. Show me the mysteries of thy word. Show me the mysteries of thy word. And so the, the parable of the, the ten virgins was a story that Jesus told them. And it's a metaphor. The bride is the, is, is the church and the groom is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Praise the Lord. The kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of ten bridesmaids who took their lambs and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lambs. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, 
they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Like Jesus has delayed, as we think that his, his coming is delayed. At midnight, they were roused by the shout. Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. The bridegroom is coming. You come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil, because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to the shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready, those who were ready, tell somebody, those who were ready, went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bridesmaids returned, they stood outside, calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, Believe me, I don't know you. So you, so you too must keep watch. So you, you too must keep watch. For you do not know the day or hour of my return. Hallelujah. The ten virgins were a congregation of Family Bible Church. The word they accepted Jesus, they heard the word of God. They accepted the word of God. They accepted Jesus as their, their Lord and personal Savior. And then they came and sat down in the church. All of them, the word of God was preached to them. They listened to the word of God. All of them. They listened to the word of God. They received the word of God at the same time. They attended church meeting. Not knowing five of them were church goers. And the five of them were church goers and pew warmers. And the other five were believers. Praise the Lord. If you are a believer, put your hands together for yourself. The other five were believers growing daily in the word of God. They were growing daily in the word of God. Praise the Lord. Do not underrate your friend that is sitting by you. When we move out of this temple, out of the premises, and we go behind the wall, nobody knows what anybody does. You might not know your friend is working out seriously her own salvation with fear and trembling. The same friend can advise you, don't come to church today because so, 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 so. But sometimes they will advise you not to come, but they will come to church. They will pay their tithe correctly. They read the word of God. They have their devotion every time. They do their spiritual. Tell your neighbor, don't take your spiritual life. Don't, don't underrate your spiritual life. Take your spiritual life seriously. Don't joke for the Lord is coming. They all listen to the word of God. They all sit under the feet of the man of God. They hear the word of God. But what happened? What happened? Miniba. What happened be, 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 before five of them became foolish? What made them foolish? Foolishness is sin. Do you agree with me? Because, because they were foolish, they did not enter into the kingdom. And a sinner is not entitled to the kingdom. Foolishness is a sin. Proverbs 24, the verse 9. And then Romans 1, 22 to 23. We'll see what foolishness means. The schemes of a fool are sinful. Everyone detests a mocker. The schemes of a fool are sinful. Oh, you are smart, but you are committing sin. Amen. Romans 1, 22 and 23. Claiming to be wise, they instead became utter fools. 23. And instead of worshipping the glorious, ever-living God, they worshipped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. Praise the Lord. Of course, so everybody knows that, that that is where the power generates, electricity power generates. And we have been asked to go to Akosombo for free to take power. Everybody go to Akosombo, take power free. As for some people, they said they would not go to Akosombo for free to take power, but they want to buy electricity and use Bob. What do you call yourself? Hallelujah. That is foolishness for you. When you trade God for anything, you substitute God for anything. That is foolishness. They left the, worshipping the glorious and living God. They worship idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals. Praise the Lord. And that is foolishness in the highest order. Exchanging the glory of God for substitutes. Anything we value more than God. We trade God for anything. We look at the creator and then exchange him for something he created. 
We look at the creator and then exchange him for something he created. Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. See then that you walk circumspectly. Walk as if you are walking in tongues. Be careful how you order your steps. A believer's steps are ordered by the Holy Spirit. Because the days are evil. The days are evil. Know the people that you move with. Know the places that you go. Know the people that you mingle with. For the day of the Lord is coming. If the day of the Lord does not come, you will die. Do you know the time, the day that you die? So walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but redeeming the time. Take opportunity of every circumstance and situation. If you meet, meet a business partner, take advantage of that meeting. If you meet a man of God, a prophet, take advantage of that meeting. If you have a seat, drop it. The man of God will bless you. When you are a meeting where believers meet, and there is an opportunity for you to sow into that meeting, do it quickly, redeeming the time. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time on WhatsApp. Don't waste your time on your iPad. You hold your iPad, you read the word of God. Take advantage of the time. Today will not come again until Jesus comes. Because the days are evil. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Praise the Lord. So we've seen that foolishness is looking at the creator, then exchanging for something he created. Having time for other things, not God. Meetings like revivals, church programs, you prefer to go somewhere else to the meeting. Maybe the angel of the Lord is bringing your blessing that day. You see that your blessing is delaying. Praise Jesus. So what are some of the things that made them foolish? Number one, they fail to recognize that the day of the Lord will surely come, but come at an unexpected time. That one is Matthew 25, the verse 13. They fail to recognize that the day of the Lord will surely come, but come at an unexpected time. Nobody knows when the day of the Lord is coming. So you must be prepared with the oil in your lamp. And then another surplus oil. Have the oil in your lamp. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. And a surplus oil for the journey. Amen. Apart from that, they forgot that death is inevitable. The giver of life can take his breath anytime, even before the day of the Lord. Psalm 49. Then Ecclesiastes 8, the verse 8. Psalm 49, 6 to 12. They trust in their wealth and boast of great riches. Yet they cannot redeem themselves from death by paying a ransom to God. Hallelujah. When the hour of death is come, no matter how much you have, you cannot bribe even the doctor. You cannot bribe death. Do you even see him? You can't see death. You will just take your life away. Redemption does not come so easily. For no one can pay, ever pay enough. We cannot pay for our death. To live forever and never see the grave, you cannot pay for that. Those who are wise must finally die, but just like foolish and senseless, leaving all their wealth behind. The grave is their eternal home, where they will stay forever. They may name their estates after themselves, <laughs> but their fame will not last. They will die just like animals. Praise the Lord. I am um, Ojuku One. This is my street. I will die. I will enter into the grave one day. With all my wealth, I cannot give God bribe. I cannot exchange. I cannot redeem myself. It's only Jesus who can redeem us. Hallelujah. Number three, the groom delayed, so they relaxed. They did not work out their, their salvation with fear and trembling. They did not work out with fear and trembling to maintain their salvation. They lacked oil, means they cut fellowship with the Holy Spirit. They lacked oil, means that they cut fellowship with the Holy Spirit. They stopped fellowship with the brethren. Because the usher did not usher me to sit under the fan, I will not come to church again. You cut fellowship with the Holy Spirit. There is no oil in your lamp. Hallelujah. The way the lady looked at me the other time, me, I will not come to church again. You cut fellowship. I, won't, I don't want to sit here because that my friend will sit in there. I don't talk to her. So I will sit there. Are you going to heaven? Do you want to go to heaven? 
They stopped fellowship with the brethren. Acts 16, the verse 5. Acts 16, the verse 5. Acts 16, the verse 5. So the churches were strengthened in their faith. They grew larger every day. When you come to church, your faith is strengthened. When you come to church, you learn the word of God. You hear the word of God. Your faith is lifted and strengthened. So if you cut fellowship, you are doing more harm to yourself. Right, First Timothy 3, 14 to 15. They did not read and study the word which is light under their feet by themselves. Psalm 119, verse 105. They were foolish because they were busy chasing worldly things. They were busy chasing worldly things. Second John 2, the verse 16. Hopping from one church to the other, looking for the God who blesses without principles to bless them with their heart's desire. It's a big fat lie with big boom boom. Praise the Lord. If you don't go by the principles of God, forget about the blessing. So if you are not ready, you are looking for a husband. Meanwhile, you are chasing somebody's husband. And so you want direction for the prophet. Why don't you leave that man for the wife? And then be alone, stand alone, and let God bless you. Because of that, the husband is not coming, you run to another church. The God that is in that church is not a principled God. That God will give you your husband. They were foolish. They were foolish because they did not obey God's word by going to evangelism. They did not obey God's word by going to evangelism. Mark 16, the verse 15. Matthew 24, the verse 14. The next one, they were distracted by jealousy. They were distracted by jealousy, envy, church politics. They were comparing themselves to themselves. Comparing themselves to themselves. Second Corinthians 10, the verse 12. Because they were facing challenges, they stopped going to church. They stop fellowshipping. They don't read the word of God. But they have forgotten that as a child of God, you must go through challenges. In the book of Ephesians 1, the verse 11. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance. And he makes everything work out according to his plan. He has chosen us according to his plan. Advance. And everything that is working in our lives is working according to his plan. It is because of God's purpose that you are in family Bible church. It is because of God's purpose that you are in your family, belong to your own family. It's because of God's purpose that you attended the school you attended and you are working at where you are working. Praise the Lord. It's in the purpose of God that you are staying in that house, in that community. Praise the Lord. So everything, if you are a child of God and you are a follower of Christ, Everything you go to, know that God is aware. Sometimes it is grooming you. Sometimes it is strengthening your faith. Sometimes it is bringing the testimonies. Have you forgotten about Romans 8, 28 and 29? All things work together for good. To them that are called according to his purpose. So small challenge, beloved, things are going to be harder and harder. According to the word of God. So don't allow small challenge to let you retire. Sit in the house. Don't do, you don't go to fellowship, you don't do anything, you sit in the house because you have a challenge. There is nothing new under the sun. No, no, told me, I told me, Fenakai. And I love one proverb. No, 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 let your joy be bubbling in you. Know that God is aware of whatever you are going through. He trusts your faith. He trusts you. He knows that you can stand. And so when the testimony is coming, it will come apokum, apokum, apokum. If you don't sit for an examination, how can you enter into the university? You have to pass the test. Don't run away from challenges. Ephesians 1, 11, God knew. Romans 8, 28 to 29. The foolish virgins, they could not stand challenge. The, the foolish versions, they lost focus. Many have substituted kingdom interest to personal and selfish interest. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. They were foolish because they were interested in crowd, magnificent church building, miracles, chasing miracles instead of miracles chasing them. Mark 16, the verse 17. I belong to a big church. Because my church is not big, so I'm even afraid to point my church to somebody. Be proud of your church. Be proud of your men of God. Be proud of that sister. Be proud of that brother. Whatever the brother or sister is going through, don't neglect the sister. Don't neglect the brother. You that you think you are standing well, help him up. You that you think you are standing well, help the brother up. Praise Jesus. Even in the army, the, the wounded soldier would never be left behind. But you and I, you castigate. You castigate and castigate and kill. Meanwhile, you two, you have skeletons in your cupboard. The day of the Lord is coming. 
there will be the midnight cry. The foolish virgin said the word of God like the other virgins, but lacked understanding and anointing. Matthew 13, the verse 19. Boy, can you imagine when the cat on was shabby? You know, when I mean, I mini preach, I Oh, when I preach, wah. A preach, eh? Oh, mommy, let preach all. A preach all. A preach all. Oh, the prophet, I've been a far word. I can mean, I preach, me I care. You, you cite an example after close of service. Just ask somebody. They lack understanding and anointing. Matthew 13, 19. Another thing that made the virgins foolish was that they listened to the word, but they forgot the word of God when they were faced with challenges. They forgot the word of God when they were faced with challenges. Matthew 13, 21. The foolish virgins did not go on missions. Acts 16, 11 to 12. We should go on missions. How many of us would want to go on missions if the need arises? If evangelism is in the area, community. But missions, you go outside your vicinity. If the man of God should say that we have to go on missions, we have to go out on missions. So who and who are ready to go? We are going to USA. There is a chance of going to UK. There is another chance of going to Fantico. There is another Piawadawa. Bokoje. When I raise my hand, I will say I want to go to US. And Okwale, are you on a plane? Bo back up by UK. You see, we are not faithful. We are not faithful. We have to be honest with ourselves. We should be able to thank you, access. We should be able to say that, no, I am going to Bokoje. I'm going to that village, that place. I'm going to preach the word of God there. I am going to minister the word of God because that is my assignment. It's a command for my master. You want to go to the U.S.? Praise the Lord. Even the lepers, we have been commanded in Matthew 28, the verse 19. Even the book of 2 Kings 7, 8 to 10. When the lepers went to loot, when the lepers went to loot everything in the Syrian camp, after eating and drinking, they said, no, we are not doing very well. 2 Kings 7, 8. 2 Kings 7, 8 to 10. The men who had leprosy reached the edge of the camp and entered one of the tents. They ate and drank and carried away silver, gold, and clothes and went up to heat them. They returned and entered another tent and took some things from it and hid them also. Then they said to each other, we are not doing right. This is a, a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. You have heard the word of God. You have testimonies. What the Lord has done for you, what the Lord has done for that sister. And you are holding instead of you to go and share the good news. They said we are not going, we are not doing right. We have to go. This is a day of good news and we are keeping it to ourselves. If we wait until daylight, punishment will overtake us. If you don't go and preach the word of God, punishment will overtake you. They said let us go and share what we have with them. Go and share the gospel. Today you are hearing the word of God that the Lord is coming. Before you get home, tell somebody. Tell somebody that the Lord is coming one day. You heard the good news. Share with somebody. Don't sit on it. You have testimonies that can change somebody. That can increase the faith of the sister or the brother. You are keeping it. When there's time for testimony, even for you to sit and stand and come and testify, you won't come. Because the sister sitting there will say something. Because the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. If we fail to go and preach, they will die in their sin. And then their blood will be demanded from us. Praise the Lord. Proverbs 24, 11 to 12. And the first point of evangelism is yourself. The first point of evangelism is yourself. Second Corinthians 3, the verse 2. You must be a sermon to others. You must be a sermon to others. Paul went to four different countries preaching. He proved to all that he was no more so the persecutor. You must be a sermon to others. Second Corinthians 3, the verse 2. You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. First point of evangelism is your character. First point of evangelism is you. Let your, you, you yourself be a sermon to others. Somebody can just see you without you open your, your mouth to speak in your compound. Ah! Mami ya subay nanse dieni subay bi wasisa. Mami ya sorry ben na wukomini ube kwa sorry. Without you opening your mouth to say anything. 
because they knew the old Mamiya, and now Mamiya is a new, new man, new creation. You must be evangelist. Let your body, your lifestyle be an evangel evangelist. Be a sermon to others. Prayer is another preparation to wait for the coming. Be prayerful. Open of heart for word of God. When Paul met Lydia, after sharing the word of God, she opened up her heart to the word. She even offered a house for meetings. She substituted what she had for God. And this is wisdom. What do you have that the Lord is demanding from you? What do you have that the Lord is demanding from you? The Lord is demanding your strength and your energy, your beauty. You can even walk to that man, walk to that gentleman, minister to the gentleman, share the word of God with the gentleman. And even if the gentleman accepts Christ and comes to your church and marries you, win and take. There's nothing wrong with it. Praise the Lord. But you, 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 your beauty, you, you are sitting down doing nothing with the beauty that God has given to you. The other time we learned that if Jesus Christ went to the cross, died for our sins, every, every sin has been forgiven, then why books shall be open? What are we, are we, what books again shall be open? Because every sin has been forgiven. So what again? The 24 hours that has been given to you, Babu Yakunta. The life that you live, you account for. The words that come out of your mouth, you account for them. By the grace of God, God has given somebody wisdom. And now the person is a manager in a certain bank. Now that sister who is a believer wants employment. You want to sleep with her before you give her the employment. You account for it. You have it, the sister or the brother needs it. You want to sit on it, you will not give. Obama make a is saying, I don't have. But the book of Proverbs says that when you have and the sister or the brother comes, give. It's an opportunity for you to be blessed. You have the men of God in the house. You need to take care of them. The other time Paul said something. He said that, I'm not interested in your offerings. I'm not interested. But you are building mansions somewhere for yourself. You are storing up treasures for yourself. Praise the Lord. These things the foolish virgins did not do. Tell your neighbor, be wise. Be wise. We should be able to overcome sin by the help of the Holy Spirit. Read Revelation 21, the verse 8. Cast away fear from our spirit. Unbelief, flee from fornication, wickedness, and be holy. Lesbianism, masturbation, homosexualism. Flee from it today. Be holy for our God is holy. In the name of Jesus. There are so many things that we do that people don't see, but... One thing now, our bishop, the founder of this ministry, Reverend Ye Kwegri, says something. Fear God where there is nobody. Where there is nobody watching you, that is the place that you have to fear God. Stop telling lies. Tell your neighbor, don't tell lies. Stop telling lies. Lies is not good. Small lies. Medium lies. Big lies. Extra, extra large lies. All is lies. Stop telling lies. Amen. Idolatry. The foolish virgins. If we hear of idolatry, we think maybe we are worshipping idols. But when we worship your phone, you worship your iPad, it becomes an idol. When you get up early in the morning, you switch on to WhatsApp. It makes me 2 a.m. Tell me WhatsApp. Then I'm in preach. You can be on WhatsApp encouraging somebody or preaching. Anything less than that is idolatry. Early in the morning, instead of your morning devotion, you open to your iPad. Read the word of God for yourself. Before you go and look for other inspirational messages. Somebody also waited upon the Lord and was inspired and wrote that. You call you to do the same. Read the word of God for yourself. Have a first aid. Have a first aid for yourself. When condition persists, then you see the prophet. Praise the Lord. Immediately you see that church attendance becomes a problem. You no more enjoy the presence of God. Your joy is in other things. Your joy is in your relationship. You have, you have already backslidden. Philippians 3, 7 to 8. But what things were gained to me, these have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. That I may gain Christ. Praise the Lord. This morning I reintroduced the Holy Spirit to you. He is our helper. Jesus knew about all these things. He knows that we cannot stand. He said, I'm living. I'm bringing another me who is going to help us. John 14, 26. I reintroduce the Holy Spirit to you to sustain you till the master will show up. Tell your neighbor, don't be like the foolish virgins. 
Be ready for the Lord's coming. Be steadfast. Be encouraged. Let's read First Corinthians 15, 15. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Hallelujah. Kashekbe, nuncho ba wabo onu. Mumokonko onle che ba wabo. 